Hello folks! Okay, this time around we want to look at just the basics of Git and the command line. So we'll play a little bit with um, creating repositories, we'll talk a little bit about cloning repositories, but we're going to save most of that for a later session. Uh, we'll take a look at adding things to a Git repository, we'll look at commits, um, we'll look at uh, stashes and a few of the other basic ideas associated with a Git repository. So what I'll do is talk about some of this stuff in theory a little bit and then we'll play with it in, uh, we'll open up a Linux window here and have just a bit of an experiment just to see what it actually does look like. All right, so where did I want to go here? The idea again is that Git organizes project files into a repository, so this is just a directory um, and it can have all sorts of subdirectories and whatnot in it. And essentially everything that is in that subdirect in that directory and all of its subdirectories is part of the repository for that project. So that top level directory for your Git project is called the root directory for your project, just uh, in case I happen to use that term later on. Um, we can take any old directory that we want that isn't already part of a Git repository and turn it into a git repository using the git init command. And we'll experiment with that in just a second. And we can also go through and create a git repository that's a copy of some other one by going through and cloning it. And of course, that's what you're doing as part of your labs and your projects. But uh, we'll save most of that part of the discussion for another session when we talk about remotes and things as well. So we'll take a look in a couple of moments at using git init to create a basic repository from an empty directory or from a directory that's just got a couple of miscellaneous files sitting in it already. And then we'll play with the process of getting git to start keeping track of files in the repository. So as far as git is concerned, you have to tell it when you've made a change that you want it to keep track of. So essentially you have to say, I've changed this particular file, I want you to make note of those changes. So that way we can be messing around, you know, changing the contents of files before we actually decide that, okay, this is a change I want to keep. So the syntax is this idea of git add and then the name of the file. And you're saying whatever the file looks like right now is what I want you to remember. So every time we make some changes that we want to keep, we stop and say, okay, now I want you to remember the changes that we've made so far. Now, there are going to be times when we want to add new files. So if we create a new file, again, we'll do a git add for it if we want git to keep track of what we've done in it. Sometimes we want to rename files or move files. So we tell git that we want to move it, to rename it, or to change it to some other location. So again, it's git mv for move and then whatever the old name was and again it can have a path and wherever its new name or new location is. And similarly if we want to delete something that git is, has been keeping track of for us we tell it I want to remove this file. So I do a git rm and oops oh, there's a typo for you. Uh, dis, disregard that uh, new name portion there. We just tell it I want to remove this particular file. So git remove and the file name. So we'll experiment with that a little bit. Actually, why don't we, we'll, we'll do that in just a second. Um, when we want to create a snapshot or a checkpoint that says, okay, I've got the repository in a state that I want to remember it. So maybe I've changed a bunch of different files, I've added some things, I've moved some things, I've renamed some things, whatever it might be. I want you to take a look at everything that it looks like right now and remember this point. And so this is done by committing. So the command is git commit. And then we want to give it a message that describes whatever the current state is. So you can say git commit a dash m and then some string saying, you know, blah, 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 blah about whatever this commit happens to be. If you leave this part out, if you don't do the dash m blah, 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 then git will open an edit window and expect you to type in whatever the information is about this particular commit and it won't proceed until you've you know type whatever it is you want to type and do a save and exit the editor. 
Now for every one of these things, Git creates some unique big weird ID to keep track of that particular commit. So internally it's storing all this stuff with a, a bunch of IDs with information about the files for each different commit that you've made. So all of this stuff is kept track of in a directory named .git in the repository. So git creates this directory and puts a bunch of stuff in it to keep track of what's going on. So this might be a good point to stop and take a look at um, what this looks like in practice. So we will uh, just fire up a terminal window here and have a bit of a play. So I've got an empty directory. Actually, if you want to see if there's any hidden files in, oops, any hidden files in here, you can see we've got a completely empty directory. Um, I've just called it basic git, whatever the whatever name it happens to be. And I decide I want to start keeping track of everything that goes into this directory as part of a git repository. So maybe I do something like, um, I don't know, I start creating some project file. And I decide that, ah, you know what? If I'm going to do this, maybe I should keep track of it as a Git repository. So I stop and go, OK, well, let's do that git init command that I talked about earlier. So git space init. And it has now turned this into a Git repository. And if we do that ls-a command again to show the hidden files as well as the regular files, we'll see that it has now added a .git directory in there. And you can actually take a look in there if you want. So you can show what's in the .git directory. And so there's a whole bunch of information that git is keeping track of. So this is the way it keeps track of all of the different ads and commits that you've made. Um, it's all buried away in here someplace. And of course, there's a ton more to git than what we're going to cover, but um, we'll get through the basics here. So in terms of the actual contents of my repository, I haven't done any ads or commits yet. So as far as git is concerned, I'm not keeping track of anything. So there is a command to take a look at the current status of your git repository called git status. No big surprise. And so it tells us what it thinks about the repository right now. And if you notice, at the moment, Git is looking through this and saying, hey, you've got an untracked file in here, this myproj.cpp. This is a file that I see sitting in the directory, but you haven't told me to do anything with it. So at this point, I'm going to turn around and say, you know what? I want you to keep track of that file. So git add, oops, if I can type, myproj.cpp. And git is now keeping track of this file. Now, I haven't done any commits yet, but if I try my git status again, you'll see that, ah, look, it no longer says that that file is untracked, but it does tell me that I haven't done a commit on any of the changes in this yet. So if we try a git commit and whatever message we want, uh, I don't know, um, first version of my proj.cpp or some such thing. And so it's done a commit and you can see that it goes through and tells us, yes, indeed, um, we've done a commit. It tells you what the ID for the commit is. And if I do my git status now, it should tell me that everything's up to date, right? We're on the, the master branch, the main branch for the project. There is nothing to commit. Uh, working tree is clean. There's nothing that's untracked. And again, if I start playing with new files, then create some miscellaneous garbage file here. And again, if I do a git status, we're back to it telling me that, hey, you've got this file that you haven't tracked. Now, suppose we do a git add blah. Same sort of idea. It's telling me that I've got this new file blah that's got changes in it. Um, and again, we can do things like say, 
I want you to rename that. I want to rename blah to data file or some such thing. So we see that git has renamed it for us. And if we do a git status, it is indeed keeping track of it under this new name. So you can use these different commands to um, keep track or to allow git to, for you to keep track of the changes that you've made in your project repository. I can create uh, subdirectories. Uh, I don't know, let's make a directory with some test data in it. NVI test, oops, test data slash, I don't know, T1. So yeah, we can start creating subdirectories and we can tell Git, oh yeah, I want you to keep track of that too. Git add test data slash T1. And if we do uh, git status, All right, we've got these various files that have been added, but not committed yet. So I can go through and commit them, or commit what this thing looks like right now. I've added some data and test files. And again, as far as Git is concerned, everything's up to date. So we can go through and use Git to keep track of what's going on in our project. All right, let's see. What else did I want to talk about? So this is, we've already run through what Git status is doing for us, right? It tells us when things are untracked. It tells us when things haven't been committed. And when we start working with the, um, with cloning, forking and cloning our, our projects from elsewhere, as you do with your labs, you'll see that it will also tell you when you've done things locally that you haven't pushed back to the other server. So for instance, if you've done three or four commits in your, uh, your local version of the repository, but haven't pushed them, then it'll tell you that you're ahead of the, the origin, the source over on the server by you know two commits or three commits or whatever it might be. So that also lets you know that you've got changes you haven't pushed. So git status is really useful for us for keeping track of you know just what git thinks about what we're doing. The other thing I wanted to mention quickly is the idea of a stash. Sometimes you make some changes, but you're not really sure if you want to keep them or not, or you make some changes but you know you're only halfway through working on them and you need to switch back and working to working on something a little bit more official um, or you know some other part of the project what you can do is stash away your changes tell git i don't want to throw these away but can you kind of just put them in a corner someplace so i can pull them out again later if i want to work on them so git stash essentially creates a stack of these changes that you've made so if you say git stash it says okay all of the things that all of the changes that you've made that you've added but haven't committed yet, I'm just gonna pop them onto this stack and you can get them out again later if you want to. So you get them out again with git stash pop, or you can simply say, you know what, I wanna throw away the top set of changes. I don't need those after all with a git stash drop. And you can get a list of how many things you've got stacked up in the stash with git stash list. So let's just quickly take a look at that. So, if I do a git stash list right now, I haven't changed anything since my last commit, so there's nothing in the stash. If I, uh, let's say I edit something, let's uh, you know edit my experiment or something like that, blah, blah, blah. Again, if, I try to do a git stash at this point, it's gonna say there's no local changes to save. So stash only keeps track of things that I've added but not committed. So now if I do a git add, uh, what did I call it, my experiment. So we do a git status and it knows I've got this changes in my experiment. So now if I do an ls, right, I see my, my experiment file sitting in there and I decide, um, I'm gonna stash the 
change away for a while. I don't want to work on it just yet. So I do a git stash and I do an ls. Ah, my experiment is gone. Right, it's pushed it off into the stash someplace. So I do a git stash list. Terrible typing today. And it says, oh yeah, I do have something stashed away in there. So if I do a git stash pop, it brings it back out of the stash and puts it back in my directory. So if we do a git stash again, we'll put it back there. So my experiment is back on the stash again. And this time around, I decide, you know what? I don't need the stuff in my experiment. After all, do a git stash drop. And it threw it away. And if I do my git stash list now, it doesn't show anything. So if you've got temporary changes that you want to try this with, feel free, have an experiment. It, uh, it really can come in handy if you're just kind of playing away with something that you don't think you might want to keep, or you have to interrupt it to work on something else. Alrighty. I think those are the basics that I wanted to get through for now. We will come back and look at some more advanced Git in the next session.